Well, good morning and happy Thursday. Hope you're having a great beginning to this day. Yeah, I'm excited to be able to share with you uh, what I believe is a, another awesome passage. So many great ones, you know, through the book of Genesis and Exodus. And here's another one. We So if you've got your Bibles, again, turn with me to Exodus chapter 18. And uh, we get to see another side of Moses and the good leadership lesson like I told you about we were going to do yesterday. So verse 1, it says this. Moses' father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, heard about everything God had done for Moses and his people, the Israelites. He heard especially about how the Lord had rescued them from Egypt. So again, priest of Midian, he's probably a descendant of Abraham's other children through Keturah named Midian, which is found, if you want to look that up, I saw this in Genesis chapter 25, verse 1 and 2. And so because of this connection to Abraham, we have a general good sense or reason that he's a true priest and worshiped the one true God, especially based on his, you know, response. Uh, earlier, Moses, you know, had uh, sent his wife Zipporah and his two sons back to Jethro, who had taken them in. So we don't know at what point, uh, maybe when the plague started, you know, because she and the boys went with him uh, and then had to go back. Moses' first son was named Gershom, for Moses had said when the boy was born, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. Uh, and this is now we're going to read about his second son. This is the first time that we read about him. And here's what we read. His second son was named Eliezer. For Moses had said, the God of my ancestors was my helper. He rescued me from the sword of Pharaoh. So uh, one of the cool things, we see the progression of Moses' faith. Remember, he started out as someone who had wanted nothing to do with this. And he had very, very little faith. But part of his journey in his relationship with God, just like our journey, is he got a chance to grow in his faith while he was just doing and leading the way God had called him to lead. May that be a reminder for us that uh, I can tell you in my own personal life that sometimes I'm the greatest learner, even though God has maybe called me the teacher uh, to be uh, overseeing and helping you in your walk as I'm, I am being guided by God and by others in mine. And then it says this, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, now came to visit Moses in the wilderness. He brought Moses' wife and the two sons with him, and they arrived while Moses and the people were camped near the mountain of God. Jethro had sent a message to Moses saying, I, Jethro, your father-in-law, am coming to see you with your wife and two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed low and kissed him, which is a, just a term of respect because here are two folks that it's really cool to see that Moses is in charge of probably up to a million people, and he's still respecting his father-in-law in his position and his oversight and his place in his life. They asked each other about each other's welfare and then went into Moses' tent. Moses told his father-in-law everything that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and Egypt on the behalf of Israel. He also told about the hardships that they had experienced along the way and how the Lord had rescued his people from all of their troubles. Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel as he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians. So Jethro had heard uh, secondhand and now he's got the hearing firsthand. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Aaron and all the elders of Israel came out and joined him in the sacrificial meal in God's presence. What a great honor, you know, to be able to say, God, you have done all of these wonderful things. Then, this is what I want you to miss. The next day, Moses took a seat to hear all of the people's disputes, to hear the people's disputes against each other. They waited before him from morning till evening. So have you ever dealt with anybody in conflict? Ever dealt with anybody going through stuff? Well, Moses got to listen to other people's issues from morning until night. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, what are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do all this alone while everyone stands around you from morning until evening? Moses replied, because the people came to get me to, you know, come to me to get a ruling from God. When a dispute arises, they come to me, and I'm the one who settles the case between the quarreling parties. I inform the people of God's decrees and give them his instructions. Then he says this, This is not good, Moses' father-in-law exclaimed. You're going to wear yourself out emotionally, physically, spiritually, and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle by yourself. Now listen to me. And so before we get into that, it's interesting, you know, that Moses is being told even here that he's going to have to delegate. And let, actually, actually, let's read it. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice and may God be with you. 
You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. Teach them God's decrees and give them instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives. You know, uh, um, but select from all the people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes, which is a kind of an important thing, that they're actually honest men. Uh, appoint them as leaders over groups of a 1,000, over 100, over 50, and even 10. They should always be available to solve the people's common disputes, but have them bring their major cases to you. Let the leaders decide the smaller matters themselves. They will help carry the load, making the task easier for you. If you follow this advice, and don't miss this, and if God commands you to do so, then you'll be able to endure the pressures and all these people will go home in peace. I love that Jethro gives him advice, but Moses just doesn't say, well, because I've received great advice, I'm actually going to follow and apply that great advice. What a lesson for us. We might receive the best advice in the world, but guess you know what's important as well for after we receive this good advice? Go to the Lord. Because sometimes even good advice is not God's advice. It may sound good. It may be good. It actually may do good, but it may not be what God wants us to do. And so I love that Jethro even says, if you follow this advice and if the Lord commands you to do so, then you'll be able to endure these pressures. And so it's it's fascinating that Moses needed to get delegate. And we see the same thing happen in Acts chapter 6, verses 2 to 4, when the apostles of you know Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, insisted that they needed to delegate so they would not leave the word of God and serve tables. Not that they were above doing so, but that God specifically called them to a specific calling. So he called, you know, men called by God to lead are always in danger of attempting to encompass more than they are able. Anybody? Right? We have a tendency to try to encompass, to try to take on more than we've ever been asked to take on by God. And so this was the first essential step and being an effective delegation for Moses for what he needed to do. Like I can tell you, you know, even my own position, um, I feel bad oftentimes because I can't be what everybody else expects, wants, or even sometimes needs me to be. And I've realized that in passages like this, it gives me encouragement and hope to say, no, my job is to raise up other people. My job is to encourage staff. My job is to encourage volunteers so that they can lead at different levels in the same way. Not that I am better than anyone by no stretch of the imagination. I just know that I wear myself out and I'd actually wear the church out because I know where I would be healthy, you know, or not healthy on a regular basis. And I know that I can't, I, I have problems yeah, at times creating some of those boundaries that actually create the kind of balance in my life. And so this was, this is the first essential step to effective delegation for Moses. First, I want you to notice this, that he had to pray for the people. He had to bring difficulties to God. Prayer is an essential aspect of Moses' leadership to the people. Then it says, teach them the statutes and the law. So for Moses to be effective, he needed to teach the people the statutes and the law so they could handle some of their disputes even amongst themselves. And then it says, Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice and follows his suggestions. He chose capable men from all over Israel and pointed them as leaders over the people. He put them in charge of groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. These men were always available to solve the people's common disputes. They brought the major cases to Moses, but they took care of the smaller matters themselves. Soon after this, Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law, who returned to his own land. And so I love that he's asking Moses to select people, men specifically, the who fear God, men of truth. So men of ability, of godliness, of God's word, and those who would not be bribed. You know, and that was kind of the, 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 the counsel that he was receiving, which is interesting because the Apostle Paul says the same counsel to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And the things that you have heard from amongst me from many witnesses Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. A guy by the name of D.L. Moody said these words, It is better to set a hundred men to work than to do the work of a hundred men. It is better to set a hundred men to work than to do the work of a hundred men. One of the things that I hope is that as you process through, you know, maybe the most important thing is even when you get good advice, let's make sure we take that advice to Jesus. Make sure we take that advice to him to be able to distinguish, God, is this still something you're calling me to do? Or am I just following what I feel like or see others 
in our doing, even if it might be the right thing or the good thing. We want to take it to him. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for today, for the opportunity to learn what uh, spiritual leadership is so that everybody can be cared for. God, you know my heart is that everybody at Valley Real Life, uh, everybody I come across would be loved, they'd be cared for individually. And I just pray you lead, guide, and direct our steps. This is Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And one other little note that uh, kind of came to mind is um, I learned a lot, obviously, from Jesus. But one of the things we learned is how he led with his time. And that's one thing that I've tried to model as well. You notice that Jesus spent time teaching to the multitudes. He invested in the few, the disciples are there. But then he always found ways and opportunities to love people one at a time. I hope I'm able to do that for you guys and for our church and that God gets all the glory for anything that he does in and through my life and in through your life. May all of us take our part of the responsibility, our part of the process of leading in the spheres of influence that he's given us, whether that's our family, whether it's groups of 10, or in our small groups, 50, ministries, hundreds, or thousands. May he be honored and glorified in it all. So guys, hope you have a great day. And once again, third week of our series is tonight, which is on physical health. You're not going to want to miss that. It's going to be challenging and encouraging all at the same time as we seek to be healthy before him. I love you guys, and we'll see you tonight or see you on Sunday. Try to be on site, but I get it if you have to be online. Love you guys.